Hi, I'm Nate and you're watching Photo Learningism. Tonight I wanted to cover a tool that was new to me. It's simple, but it's got some power to it and it's got some other really neat features which I think you're going to love. Join me as we go through Medibang Paint Pro and see what that can do for you. Okay, so I brought in just a simple picture I took on my iPhone to start things off and give you a quick look at the interface here. And let me just first say that the, the program is centered around two major areas. It has the drawing and the illustration and the designing interface here. And there's this whole online cloud piece of it, which I'm not going to get into today because I just couldn't wrap my brain around that part yet. However, I spent some time digging into it. I found some things which I think are really valuable, especially being that this is a free tool. You can go out there and download it. I'll have a link in the description below of where you can get it and uh, try this out. I found it very akin to paint.net, which I speak a lot about on my channel. And um, I see a lot of similarities in some of the methodology of this tool versus that tool. Um, I won't compare them so much in this video, but just know that there's some similarities if you're familiar with paint.net. So, if you're new to the channel, very quickly, photo learningism is about building a community of knowledge using tools that are valuable for photography and art in general. Um, I'm out there on the lookout looking for new creative ways to use tools, and I'm focusing on things that are free, um, but I'm exploring the whole universe of art, trying to bring us all together bring us to a point where we can experience art and help each other grow and cultivate our craft and just ultimately enjoy our lives with this. So, getting back to Medibank Paint Pro, uh, one of the things that really jumped out at me first is that the interface is workable. I've talked a little bit on, on my other videos about how I kind of dislike the split interface of on having things on the left and the right. Although it's very intuitive that you can click and drag things around as you need to. Um, that I thought was just great because it's not always that easy to move things around. So that's a big plus for this interface. Uh, the layers themselves are draggable. Um, that's something that other programs suffer with. So again, nice out of the box feature uh, that is intuitive uh, because that's how software should be written. You shouldn't really have to get too deep into it before you can start using it. It's the mark of a good product. Um, I purposefully did not go immediately into the tutorials. I like to try to experience things in the raw, trying to get a good idea of just how well was the interface designed uh, so I can share that with you and let you know how hard it was uh, to get into it. So that was nice. Um, there are a lot of reasonable features that you'd expect. Uh, Looking at it as a photographer, and I realize that this program is not geared towards a photographer, but you could use it on a basic level to do some simple photo enhancement. It does have the simple hue controls where you can drill into those things and play with your color a little bit, which was nice. Um, you could also uh, do the tone curve, which is a happy and, and welcome thing. Um, it's not doing anything because I'm not the right layer, <laughs> but uh, it works in a familiar way that other tool, other software that has this, this tool works and that makes it familiar and that makes it easy. Um, I've seen the, uh, the curves and the tonal tools drawn out different ways and it was confusing so I'm happy to see that this is a common format that was familiar and easy. Uh, so it has the normal blurs, the Gaussian blur, the motion blur, those are very intuitive and in fact they seem to render somewhat quickly uh, the render engine that's behind it was was well done so I can applaud that as well sometimes depending on the uh, size of the graphic and granted this one's not very big uh, but it can take a lot of time computationally to run that even if you have a good computer it's just the effect processing was not written so well to handle it so this one looks very well done uh, the other thing that caught my eye was this thing called a snap guide. And this is pretty cool in that you can set up kind of a vectorish kind of guide and it will help you to draw that. I can put 
a sketcher here and even though I'm just kind of dragging it along it will help me construct that line based on that vector template which is a great idea having said that it is a little limited and about the most you can do with it is drag it around uh, there is one that's called the vanishing point which is kind of customizable in that you can start with one line and then you draw out the other line and it kind of does some math behind the scenes to space that out evenly. That could be helpful, but again, you only get the same number of splits every time. You can't rotate it or do any of that. So it has its limitations, but it could also have its uses. It can shortcut uh, some of the shape and perspective on a simple sense, particularly if you're doing illustration or for comic work. I think that's what this was geared towards, was comic artists, uh, to draw out this kind of vanishing or kind of quick flash effect. Um, so that, that was really interesting. They also have other uh, templates which were circles and that's really cool. You can do a perfect circle anywhere around the rim uh, or you can do a series of circles very quickly. Speeds up your process of what you're trying to get to and I thought that was very inventive. Um, something I hadn't seen before. That was really neat. The last thing uh, that I just thought was was wow, you know, this, this is really cool and I hadn't really bumped into this was something called um, correction and it fights you a little bit but it's also very helpful in that if you're trying to draw something that has very smooth very refined lines to it a landscape a face <laughs> you can draw that with this correction and it goes all the way up to a degree of 40 don't ask me what the increments actually are breaking down to they're just different levels of how intense it's trying to correct your work but what happens is as I draw a line it's trying to anticipate what it is that I'm actually trying to do and smoothing it for me as I go let me give you a contrast if I turn that off and try to do the same thing that's what happens so it as I said it fights you a little bit but it can be useful you have to play with the intensity a little bit to get to a level where you can still get most of the control over where the movements are, but the line is very refined. So that's a nice feature, a very nice feature. Some of the cons, it, the program is a little buggy. I found that if I tried to reuse the same features like many times in succession, sometimes it just would stop working it wouldn't throw an error or anything but i just it couldn't get to function anymore and I'd have to close and reopen that's a little you know it's a free program you can only say so much but that was just one thing that stood out as a, as a con and the only other thing i really had to say that i wasn't impressed with was just that as i mentioned those snap guides are not really so customizable um that that could be so so awesome if it was just tweakable even to the idea of um how varied the splits are but even as it is it's a really cool idea i applaud the developers for for coming up with some of these inventive ideas and um and making this available for free uh one last thing is that these brushes they're not so customizable either again this is designed towards comic artists so there's not a lot of play there However, you could see this as a strength as well in that a lot of these features are very stripped down, very basic, and folk, it, it causes you and forces you to think in a focused manner. And that's what I always loved about Paint.net is that it wasn't coming out of the box such a, a super bells and whistles type of program, although you can enhance it with plugins, um, which you cannot in here. But this really forces you to focus on the core things. And I think when you can do that, it really helps you, especially as a photographer or doing picture formats, bringing it into a program like this because you know coming into it, you can only do so much. So you got to work really hard framing the picture, making sure that the angle and the settings in their camera are correct for the lighting and the environment and, and really hone that in so that when you get to the, the improvement stage, it's just touch up. It's just minor alteration. That's the way it should be anyway, right? We shouldn't be spending all our time in post fixing what we shoot out in the field. This should be done correctly to begin with. But this is a good tool that brings us back to that, that core approach of we do it right the first time. <laughs> so again, Medibang Paint Pro. Um, I'm not sure 
where the name comes from. It's kind of catchy, but I, again, we'll put a link in the description below. Again, I'm Nate. This is Foil Learningism. I love to do reviews on open source free tools uh, that are valuable to the art community out there. Come and find me at natesorallo.com. Come visit me on Facebook. Come to YouTube and subscribe and continue to watch the content because that helps. Please do give us a thumbs up and uh, support the channel. We appreciate you watching this and being with us and hopefully enjoying this journey. Stay tuned and come back for more. Thank you so much.